Well, I've been following your ministry for a very long time. I was actually in NGM Campus Ministries back in the day. Don't make me holler <laughs> now. Don't make me. <laughs> so I've been following your ministry for a very long time. And a lot of people, including myself, consider you a father in the faith. So before the interview, we talked, you spoke about how you went to Africa and you spoke with bishops and they were shocked that you didn't come with a message of financial prosperity, but you spoke about the standard of God's word. What is your message for the church today? Uh, number one, I believe that what a person is in private is what they are in God. That a person should develop an intimacy with God so that not only does he know us, because he knows every hair that's on our head, but that we know him. Every person listening to me right now know if they really know God as opposed to just knowing about God. And every one of the prophets, whether major or minor, came from a personal place with God. And from that personal encounter with God, they spoke out to the culture so that they themselves had already been, been the, they're the fruit of what they spoke. Uh, I'm thinking about Ezekiel right now. In the first, say, seven chapters, it's amazing how many times God spoke to Ezekiel and said to him, first, eat this word yourself. Then what you become, take that out and speak that out to the people. And I believe that's true for every person, that we, on a personal level, to develop, we got to have a God said that we would die for it. We know it's, it's so much God, we'd die for it. And secondly, where you don't have a God said, you have a principle. Mm -hmm. And in order to know what to do in the practical, it's based on some principle. We are now challenged on the basics of life, starting with the family. And we don't know what that is anymore. And if you don't know what a family is, then I just want to be clear about it to all the people listening God already said what it is. And all this thing that we're going through in terms of the other community trying to redefine what family is, God says, I'm the Lord your God. I change not. It's a man and a woman. And the union of the marriage bed is where that God, we reproduce the life of God from our DNA. God said it to Adam, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. We should think globally. We should reproduce who we are in our children and they take leadership in the world. Yeah. Speaking of children, I, I feel as though now, like the family's under attack, but I think youth are under attack as well. There's a lot of oppression all over the world. We see currently in our own country, people rising up in the streets and rioting and things like that. I think from a sense of, of hopelessness, and we see it in, in other places as well. How can we offer hope to our youth again? Well, first of all, we know biblically uh, the last two verses of the Old Testament were similar to this. It's not a direct quote, but Malachi 4, 5, and 6. In that great and terrible day of the Lord, I'll send Elijah the prophet, and he'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I smite the earth with a curse. If there was no New Testament, the last word in the Old Testament would be curse. And the direct reason for it is a disintegration, a generational disintegration. Fathers not sowing and spending time with their children, not understanding the prophetic destiny like Abram and his children, Isaac over his children, speaking over your children their destiny, and then training them. It, it costs something to raise children. It's not cheap. Uh, they're challenged by the day, but the adults have trouble with generational transfer. Your book, um, you have a lot of books. You've written a lot of books, but this current one is your journey with God. What was your, your goal for this book? Well, you know, I'm kind of fussing. I, like you said, I'm a father. And you know how granddaddies do. You kind of fuss. <laughs> I think people are saved from hell, but they still live like the devil. In other words, I'm saying they're born again. We are royalty by birthright, and we're living underneath the level of our birthright. I believe the issue is consecration. You can be born again through acknowledging Jesus' sacrificial death, asking Jesus to come into your heart. But now the issue is what standards you're going to live on. That book is a purifying book to help a person on a personal level get consecrated before God. There are a lot of great people out here that don't know they're supposed to be great. And I want to tell them, if you make Jesus the choice of your life and live by his standards, greatness is being developed in you. People listening to me right now, they have something so much 
of God. It must be developed and it must be seen. And so don't be afraid to think global, to be a pioneer, to believe in people. Don't be discouraged if they let you down. They, they've come from a hard place. Try, do it again. Tell them to get back up. You get back up. Do it again. And, and the Bible says, God says this, a righteous man falls down and gets back up seven times. The issue is not falling. Get back up. Please get back up. And it'll make a difference in the world.